ancient, hidden, forgotten. This is Harbor Town. Harbor Town is an all new series from Miniature Building Authority, the leader in tabletop gaming scene. Unique, uh, flexible, and playable, Harbor Town will take your games to a new Is it on? I see the video. It's on. on. It's on. Normally, it, uh, William. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening. I've been working on a model uh, to bring as a visual aid the next time I do a Saturday special. Oh yeah? What type of model? More like the model of a sort of tool. <laughs> like a backhoe? <laughs> yeah, like a backhoe, but a little bit more personal. A little bit more in your face. <laughs> Literally, when you say, quite literally. Like a brake assembly for a 74 Chrysler Cordova? Mm-hmm. Almost. There are a lot of similarities. They can both be real expensive. Switch. There we go. Your favorite one, Alan. Uh, I went on mute. Hi! What's your favorite character? I got Garth Warmonger? Yes. He's my favorite character. Rocks put right in chat. Michael Baton, of course. He might be an improvement on the Phillies. That's why you don't watch baseball. Ryan Bromclatch just put die, Michael Baton die in chat. <laughs> no! There you go, like Alan, you got someone on your side. <clears throat> well, well, Brian, it's, it, it can't be worse. I brought, I brought Vane back as a grave master. <laughs> so, uh, a lich for Michael Baton would be uh, not that bad. How high, is he a high level cleric? It's like eight. seventh. Seventh or eighth. He's eight. Oh, he's not, he's not high. We would be able to ask Mark if he was here on time.
There's so many sponsors who take forever to go through them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Three. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to leave it at three for a, a bit unless someone approaches us. You can be bribed. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We all can. We all have our breaking point on bribe with yeah. bribery. Especially Tim. Just kidding. I know. <laughs> so Val Valerie will be over at my house at 7 o'clock. I mean, uh, um, Tuesday. She's managing the her own work for her. There you go. And then she'll be at Allen's and Bill's after that. My own Tuesday? I don't know. She's, she's getting after it for, uh, for her job, selling. How old is she now? 18. Dear God. Yeah, you're old, man. <laughs> that's, that's not new. <laughs> that's not new. <laughs> So, Anna, I understand you'll be in for PAX Unplugged. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. She got offered to come out here and uh, all her room and all paid. What company was it? Sirenscape? Sirenscape, yep. <laughs> yep. You, you know, uh, Bill, the one that, that makes all the sound effects that I'm afraid to give you. <laughs> yep, on, yep. Now. So I'm going to help them in, in the booth for, for... So that will be fun. Oh, awesome. So I hope to come over to Jay and see the awesome basement. Yeah. Don't entertain them. It's our third bottom. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. It is bad. I can, yeah. That's <laughs> why I understand just watching it on Twitch. It's awesome. Yep. And now that we have the Harbor Town stuff, that's and you're going to see that in two Thursdays. Yeah, we're going to see that uh, on September 5th, and uh, that stuff is pretty cool. Dave's going to have to dig deeper underground, have a little underground dungeon section just to store all I still got to dig down and, <laughs> and have to have yeah, a sub-basement, and how many levels of, of dungeons will you have? So. Oh, man. Yeah. I still have room along that back wall, though, to put in uh, put in some more IKEA. Um, I probably could fit three more in there, so i got to go get them. I should really do that. So, all right, let's come on here. Yeah, I can't make any more terrain until you make space. Yes. Yep. So, hello everyone. Good evening. I was going to say good morning. My gosh. Hey, I'm Jay Killer Gazumba. I got I got a lot of the 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 gang on. Anna's on, and she's doing something behind the scenes for us. Uh, doing it for a lot of people. So that'll be uh, awesome. Um, that we uh, we will put out and uh, put out that update to everyone shortly, and then uh, I got uh, I got the ever mysterious DM Tim on. I got Alan on, and I got Bill the Master Crafter on. Bill Alan needs a a, a, a name, right? Everyone else has got a nickname of some sort. Um, and, uh, probably not, right? Alan, you just want to, I'm just Alan. They just want to just call me Alan. <laughs> so, welcome everyone. So tonight, uh, this is an awesome night because. Uh, we have not talked about Altamira for what, a specific reason, and that was because uh, of. By the way, is my sound clear on, um, out there, everyone? Just want to make sure anyone who's watching Twitch, it's 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 clear. So, what's up, Jeff? Uh, okay, good, Jeff. Good to hear. So, um, Altamira has been a and this map up, and I'm sorry, Anna. I got the Darlene old Darlene map up that I edited. I That's think, that uh, has yeah. It will come with the explanation why soon. Yeah, and yeah. Photoshop, and you can see on this map in the upper left hand corner, Altamira is up there, just to show how long ago it, it was done. The outposts are up there, Garth, Andrea. There's a whole bunch of pictures up. So Altamira has been in our game forever, and we're going to go over uh, the free city. Uh, and how it how it started, um, and a lot of other cool things. Uh, everyone got their notes, right, guys? Yep. So, all right, cool. And uh, this is just tip at the tip of the iceberg. Uh, we don't have a map, and we're working on that. And I did a rough sketch, but we're going to be working on getting a map for uh, for this, and uh, and really getting some detail because it really deserves that um, because it's a huge, huge hub of uh, venturing. So guys, what do you, uh, anyone want to have any uh, opening comments about Altamira? And uh, I mean, of course, Tim remembers the most momentous event that happened to Murdoch the Mighty occurred in that adventure, but uh, 
So uh, any opening thoughts, gents, from any of us? <laughs> Been around longer than I have. That's true. Bill came in basically in 92, and this was in 1987. Hey, Geek. What's up, Sean? Geek Dice is on, so hello. Hi. I can't even remember why we picked the area specifically. I will tell it. you. I know that story because I ran the adventure. That's a good question, cool. Tim. Very good question. And Alan, unfortunately, was not there in Fairfax, Virginia, when that happened. No, one of the few adventures I missed. Yeah. So, uh, while we, uh, real quick, this is how the Free City Altamir came about. And then we'll go back to day one. Uh, we took a trip, myself, Tim. Walt, Tom, right? Am I missing someone? No, Gary. No, Gary was Ohio. This is a different trip. So uh, that was it, right? Right. Tim was the four of us yeah. in the car, and we drove. Tim, uh, we drove down to see Mark, who was staying in Fairfax, Virginia, at the time with his sister and brother-in-law. And we were going to finish our. This is 1987, so we're going to finish the Temple of Elemental Evil. There's Tom. Tom's on. Great time. By the way, Tom was the only one who could drink at the time, legally. So we went to the supermarket, and Tom got all this beer, if you remember that run, Tim. Uh, including a, We got Foster's. We got Kirin Ichiban. Yeah, we got all this stuff. We got all that. So it was uh, – Tim, yeah, Tim was uh, a happy drunk that uh, the first night. And uh, we played, and we finished the Temple of Elemental Evil. Uh, first, and that was uh, that was a cool, uh, you know, that had been running for almost a year, and we finished that up, and then Tim ran an adventure uh, with the Knights of the Eastern Sun out of his, and basically killed off the entire party, but two characters in like the third round. Uh, that was nasty, if you re remember. Gazumba and Fensic were the only two left alive. You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. But like uh, a lot of people died in that one, and then we ran a third one, and this is what it was about. So if we let's, I'm going to flip to the map here, and I'm going to put it on hold. I don't like to think of them as dying as much as needing to go to the ICU. No, they, the time I remember, Pelmer was dead. Yeah. Uh, I wonder dead. why I miss all Tim's adventures these days. Because uh, you're smart? No, I'm just kidding, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. There's risk to adventuring. Yes. Oh, by the way, let's get caught up a little bit here too while I'm talking here. So uh, we need to get we need to get to our, our, our total. Yeah. Uh, let me flip this forward, and we're, then I'm gonna put a hold on this and go. Okay, here's the map. So let me configure this and just put no progress. All right, it'll go to that one. That's the large area map. Okay, here's Altamira on the map. By the way, this is our this is Anna's custom edit for us. Thank you, Anna. Thank you so very much. You're welcome. Yes, and you can see on there. Uh, there's a southern tip, the southern tip of Celine. And there we go. We got old Tom with his re up, and we got some more coming too. I know it's I know it's really it's really over the top on the colors on these new these new. Uh, but I I like them. So I know Walt doesn't, but I'm sorry. If you see the southern area tip of um, of Celine, you see Selmon Estate, Golden Tower. Here comes Mark. Uh, Lightning Rod Tower, Ranger Hole. That's Arathorn's uh, Ranger location. They're all customized in our campaign, but Altamira is in the county of Ulick. So that area, if you notice, is on the other side of the mountains. It's really... Uh, in the county of Yulik, it's away from everything. So the idea was this. Celine is the Order of Yulik's top ally, and running from Outpost 1 to the south up through to Cowerwood, there was, there was needed a trade route. So three Cavaliers, all one NPC and two player characters. Tim had Serastus, the half-elf who was neutral good, Walt had Britomart Aridhel, who was a chaotic good gray elf cavalier, all knights of Yulik, and I had Elijah Winchester III, lawful good human. So they got permission from the county of Yulik in this adventure. It's number 39 in our – that's how low. We're up to 859 now, guys. This is number 39 in our, in our series of adventures called Cavalier School, and they got permission to clear the land and to build three keeps there. One was uh, one was the shape of a cylinder. That's Rastus's. One shaped like a you know the standard square keep construction, Britomarts, and uh, 
Elijah's was shaped like a pyramid. Uh, why? We just wanted to make them all different. So that was the whole first adventure that we ever ran there. Uh, Macares showed up, of course, just to have fun. And that's the critical hit we were talking about last week, where Murdoch got right arm, left leg cut off in one swing. That happened during that adventure. Well, at least he didn't die. So that's when it started back in 1987, this location. And that's yes, out to hey, what's up, Will? What's going on? Let me see. Uh, I'm one short here. Let me, uh, let me, let me get caught up here, and there we go. So, um, do you remember anything from that adventure, Tim? Since you're the only one of the three here, here that was, I mean, it was that was a long weekend, man. We played twenty four. It, it was a long weekend, but it, it just I remember the intense uh, emotion of hating Macarash. It was just one of those times it, he got away, right? Of course he did. He always got away. Yeah, it was the one we got. It was one of the ones we got away, and I just, you know. Jay was really good at letting that villain get away and just it would just fill me with rage. I mean. <laughs> yeah, geek, geek, think about this. So he's got the one arm out and the other leg, and he had a short sword of sharpness, critical hit. That arm only takes a limb off. Could could be your head with a sword of sharpness. Right. But yeah. then the other crit effect, and you know those tables. By the way, Alan is the the creator of the critical hit tables we have. So everyone give Alan a, a round of applause. Uh, so Geek Dice has them now. And uh, he, uh, I gave them to a lot. Anyone who played at Gen Con in my game, a lot of people wanted them. Uh, we gave them out, <laughs> so uh, people will enjoy that, including the Tim special ones. Now, the Tim special ones weren't on that. The, the Gig Dice needs to know that it was a sword of sharpness. So if you roll a nineteen or higher, it cuts a limb off automatically. Yeah, well, so back did, then it, we do it as a twenty. And then it was also a, it was also a tw natural twenty, which on yeah. the critical hit roll, it took a limb. Yes. Why. Yeah, absolutely. So a double, a double the table wall. doesn't have a double limb hit on its table. <laughs> well, you could a massive critical. You could theoretically now. You couldn't back then. We didn't have massive criticals then back then, right? Alan, it was just double, triple, and special yeah, effects. Absolutely. And there were zero, one to one hundred back then. So yeah. the hundred was. I, I wait. Mark was on. What happened? I don't know. Uh, he's probably having issues. I'm just gonna. I'm, I'm sending it in group text. All right. So you guys, uh, uh, that group text that goes around, guys, take a look for that because I'm gonna have it off here. So that started it off back then, and little did we know that I don't know whose idea it was, but I know Alan named the city. Um, yeah. But we said, oh. I'm missing something very important. Yeah, you're jumping ahead there. I'm jumping way, <laughs> jumping way ahead. There was one. There was a, a dirt road there, okay? Because it wasn't. It was a trail for um, commerce running up along bordering the Sus Forest. In that area, if you notice, the mountains and the Sus meet. Mountain Sus meet, and then there's a little bit of an opening valley in that spot. We thought it was perfect. If you look on the Darlene map. That, that's the area that it, it encompasses. Um, but we had had it so that there was one person there. Uh, there was a small copse of trees. They happen to be kumquat trees, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is where I get people la uh, again, laughing. And uh, this guy was named Hoops. Hoops was based on a gentleman, an old gentleman, I'm sorry, we're terrible, who worked at RCA with us during the summers. That worked with Alan, myself, and Tom during the summers. He was there, and it was Hoops' fruit stand, and he would sell everyone kumquats. He had, he had a branch fruit stand, too, right? Or was it a relative, the same name, uh, that also was in Highport, right? Uh, yeah, that was, yes, of course. It's just like Pete and John's Teamster service, which they, they spread out all over the place as well. So that's what that's how that happened. And you're going to see, thank courtesy of, of the fantastic work of Brian Blumklotz, once again, we have our own heraldic shield for the city of Altamira. We're going to share that and put that up probably later in the show, along with Anna's going to share something special with everyone Later in the show, for pa for her Patreons... It's, lit, it's already on Patreon. Oh, okay. But yeah. for the non-Patreons who are watching tonight, you may want to take yep. advantage of this. Oh, yeah, so. yeah. The Patreons can go to and, and, and get to see it right now. But it's yes. it, it's, a, it's something that everybody probably knows about already. But now it's happening. So yeah. Yes. So anyone who's on tonight, you may want to... When we put up a link there, you may want to grab what's on that link. Um, because uh, it'll, be, uh, it'll be cool. So... Uh, 
Okay, Tim had uh, snapped off for a second there. So, um, Alan, uh, early on, I know you didn't have a character, but then Brenna March stepped out because she took over her ha family, the uh, you know, um, the Tellerin estate, and left, and then you got Trexler in, right? And 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 that, excuse me, and he's from House Selmalin. And uh, so Trexler stepped into Brenna March's place. So what do you remember early on, Alan, about, about Altamira? I remember it was just it was just basically a Cavalier training site is what it became since they were all Cavaliers up there. Um, and Mark's Tower wasn't built yet, right? Swain's Tower? No, it was not built initially. He was he was he he was he was working on that um, um, probably when the wall was almost finished, if I recall. I think it was the other way around. I think Swain's Tower was first. Okay. And then we realized we had to build to, to build a defensive fortification around it. Yeah. And you said you'd let Arcturus build an archer school there if he paid for the wall. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, see, this is why everyone is needs to participate in this because it's our old man memories. Uh, I'm glad to hear that. So, um, what happened was, yeah, we had Swain's Tower, and Swain built his, then he had the four towers, and we always referred to it as the Cavalier training site, or the Cavalier site. And things started growing around it. Like I said, we should make this a little more defensible. So our tourist said, look, I'll build an archer school there, and we'll build a wall around it. And we agreed that if, if he built the wall, and it probably, I think he charged me, I want to say a million gold for that. Yeah, I, it was a lot. You got to remember, this is still coming off Monty Hall era days where guys had a lot of money. So, right. You know, so there's the founding members of figures. You have Elijah the Third, Sharice, Brennamart, Rastus, Swain, Arathorn, Arcturus. That's the list of pictures of those figures. Now, Brennamart's since been updated with a 3D rendering picture. There's an older figure of hers, but you can tell how old those the most of them are old Ralph Parthas. You know, a lot of them are all things dark and dangerous um, uh, pictures. And Bill's working on something, too. We're going to find out later on the show what he's doing. Uh, looks like he's picking trash. Me, I'm, just, I'm working on a number of things. So. Yes. So, so uh, that yeah, those are the founding members of, of the area for the most part. Now, there was a couple other people we may have forgotten. This is a good thing on how a, how, how a city will get built and when you, if you, someone else is DMing in your campaign. I think that would be. This is a good uh, description of what actually occurred over time. This didn't happen overnight for us. We go, oh, there's a city. We started with just. Now we're at four towers, right? And Swains. Um, everyone's seen Swains. I'm gonna I'll, uh, scroll through. He's done a real good job. Um, and let me get to it. Here are his levels. There's um, uh, levels of Swains map, and then this was customized by. Um, Stellarian Games, who have since disappeared off off the internet, and that is the Swain Keep. Um, that was, you know, that was probably our first real custom building that we had done, uh, and it's nice. It is a nice, nice uh, tower. Uh, it was. You'll note the feathers on the top. It's supposed to be look like a quiver. Yes. He worships Alana. Yes. Uh, Swain was a fighter clerk mage, just like Gazumba. Of, and he was of Alana. Uh, we had a lot of triple class characters. We talked about that in some of the older ventures. That we, you know, triple class was the way to go back in the day. Um, uh, Murdoch was a fighter clerk, but Ulrich was a fighter. You know, Devitt was a fighter clerk thief. We had a whole bunch because back in the day there wasn't a lot of variety. But pre Arthur Kane, there wasn't a lot of variety of classes. So this this is a uh, our first building that we had made for it. The other three towers are not crafted at all. Uh, who knows if that's needed or not. But this is a really nice piece with a lot of places to put figures on it in use. Uh, I am planning on actually utilizing that during our charity stream in, in November. Um, it's going to be and an Altamira. So I'm probably at Swain's Keep. So that'll uh, get use of that, um, that tower. So Alan tells us that the wall got built, and I'm thinking a few years later, at some point. I mean, do you have a do you have an idea of a time frame? This is pre bill correct? Oh yeah. So a timeline for what? When a city started built for me? Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm thinking yeah. like. Yeah, I got an idea. So what happened was after Swain built his tower, we started doing we were starting to run adventures out of there. Is when Arcturus built his wall, and that, I think that generally took about. I think you we, you determined it would take about. Uh, three years of game time or five years or something like that. And, and so it was about a year, year and a half from the build the wall. Um, and then once he built the wall, Arathorn put his 
uh, ranger, one of his ranger holds there in the woods up in the northern part of the city. I don't what? even know if the woods are still there anymore, but that's what he did. And that kind of gave us the first resident that wasn't part of the part of the the, the, the infrastructure. Well, that's also uh, that's also all right. This is where we're bouncing around because the Bo right. Bet rooming house was built. Now the boat, all right, guys. Thank you, Taryn Stormwalker. Thank you so very much. You all have, in wherever you live, a CD motel, right? Where where ill repute takes place. Everyone has that in their life. Ours was called. It was on Black Horse Pike called the Bow Bet. So we named the rooming house that um, all the workers stayed when the wall was being built. The Bow Bet rooming house, correct? That was building was there. That was a inside building that was built at that time. So that Definitely. turned into the ball. Uh, turned into an. Uh, that's at the bottom. That's a very low class. In I think uh, to this day, Bill's character Steyer hangs out Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Yes. He wouldn't stay anywhere else. <laughs> so uh, that building was built early on. Yeah, so we had a lot of goings on there, and then we just started filling in things. Now, once again, guys. If you look on this map, Altamira is really, really, and Anna will tell you, it's really off the beaten track. I mean, it's like in the middle of nowhere when you think about it. Because the county of Ulick has all the mountains ranges. Uh, even the principality of Ulick is, you know, Fog Hollow is like the closest location. It's There's nothing nearby. Um, and it is it was perfect for what we were doing in our game. As, put, as uh, putting it along a trade route. And then we had businesses. And I have a whole bunch. We're going to talk about some of them uh, built up. So um, are you having trouble, Mark? Yeah, he said he was having problems with his camera. He's going to join in on chat. All right. Okay, that's cool, Mark. If you stay on chat, that's that's awesome. That'll work. That'll work. So he's camera fried. That sucks. All right. So we got Mark on chat, too. That, that'll absolutely work. So... Let me start scrolling this up again here. You have a city now, a wall being built, and of course that will attract its protection. So that will start attracting businesses, individuals, settlers. Yeah, yeah, and and that that's what happened. That's what we assumed happened over the course of gameplay. This is still pre-bill, right? So we're talking about pre-1992. Yeah. You know, because Bill doesn't remember any of this, I'm assuming, correctly? No, it's, it's well before my, well, well before Okay. My time. Yeah, so we're looking at probably 1990, 91, maybe in that in that range, Alan, as far as w where we're talking about here at this point, you'd yeah, say? I'd say that's just about right. Yeah, that's what, that's what I thought. <clears throat> so, as the city built up, we started adding things. I said, guys, there's land here. You want your characters to come in. So a lot of high-level characters started coming in and putting in businesses. We we went to um, Tim. All right, so Tim, who's off now, got married, by the way, in lovely Breckenridge, Colorado. And a couple of us all went out to that wedding. It was really nice. Um, part of his wife's family was like lived nearby. I think her, his, her uncle lived in Breckenridge. So they had this cool bar and it was a downstair and an upstair bar. So what did you do, Alan, you and uh, Walt? So Walt and I both took a look at the uh, two bars. We had two uh, characters who were high level looking to settle. So one of them built, uh, one, they, one was a restaurant, one was more of a bar. So Sam, my highest level thief, a little halfling decided to build uh, upstairs at Sam and then Boyd, it was Walt's, at one point, good clerk, illusionist clerk, or clerk Um yeah, gnome. Downstairs, uh, which was more of a bar. Downstairs yes. at Boyd. So it had, uh, uh, you had upstairs at Sam's and downstairs at Boyd's, which was basically the first, I think, besides the Bo Bet, was the first like kind of like cool hangout place that we had. And that was like, what we level were you that like 15th, 16th at that oh, level? 13th, 14th, something like that. Yeah, range. a halfling thief and a gnome clerk illusionist built that. So we finally had some establishments getting built. And then uh, everyone else jumped in and started doing some other uh, uh, places. So I'm going to go over one or two of them here. 
Uh, let's see if you know, uh, and then uh, I was going to say uh, we can go around the table if anyone uh, wants to uh, uh, key one out. So, um, and some of these names are really silly people. Please excuse us being stupid. Okay. All right. Um, the door. The, right. Let me step back. Walt wanted Shum and Emil, his high-level dwarf, who you guys met in the uh, uh, Defense of the Watcher Chatwares adventures, you saw. Um, and if you look on the map here, oh, God, you can barely see it. There's a dwarven quarter up here. So there's a lot of mining going on in the Lort Mills. All right, right there. Dwar whoops, dwarven quarter. Okay. There's a lot of mining going on in the Lort Mills. So there's a whole bunch, there's a whole section that's just dwarves. There's dwarves here, there's halflings, there's gnomes, elves, humans. You know, there's a whole, and there's a lot of humanoids too. There's a couple of humanoids that are of neutral alignment. Uh, some of Tom's favorites are here. So it's a mishmash of everyone. There's, you know, as long as there's no evil intent, hey, everyone's welcome to the city. So. There is a Dwarven mining establishment uh, location here that's like the merchant ones that take the gems that come down from the Lord Mills. That's in this location. And with that, let me see, is their, their bar. Do you guys remember the name of the bar in the Dwarven section? There's a trading post, an armor, and mining supply, an office for um, for the mining cooperative. And then there's one bar in the Dwarven uh, sector. Does anyone know the name? No. The third shaft in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that at all. <laughs> okay. Well, that's that's the name of the bar. <laughs> Did you name that? Uh, probably. <laughs> I, I would say that sounds like Walt. Yeah, it could have been. It sounds, sounds like, like a Walt special. By the way, Walt is working late tonight. He's going to try and get on. He had to work late tonight, so... You're working on Sundays. Yes. You like that? The third shaft. <laughs> Pick an establishment, Alan, some someplace you remember. Oh uh, well obviously um, the the one with the bar across the street from Twerk's house. Okay. Here's a, an example of how we're developing stories in Altamira, and you take something and you just try and run with it. The name of the establishment he is talking about, I created. Uh, called the uh, Inn of the Lonely Dove. The Lonely Dove, right. The Inn of the Lonely Dove, run by a female who is, is she full elf? She's half elf, half gray elf. She's a tiefling. <laughs> He's so paranoid. Uh, her name is Dove Elfheart. And, he, uh, and he's eaten a lot of elf hearts. <laughs> She's, she's definitely a demon of some sort. So Dove Elfheart is always there, and she is – it's a very quiet establishment. It's right in the middle of downtown. It's actually next to the scintillating Scepter Theater House that Gazumba built. So there's a big theater uh, location there, kind of like there is in Greyhawk. We try to do a lot of things that were in Greyhawk. Um, and it's a small establishment, and uh, Alan's character, Torque Storm, his uh, – is he Wild Elf? He is a wild elf. He's a he's wild elf. Uh, has been going there for years, and he's been trying to get friendly with good old Dove. And now it's to the point, this has got to be over the course of 20 years of adventuring. I pull stuff out long term. They are finally engaged to be married, and that, that that's where we are. What could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? So uh, it turns out, though, um, she has been married twice before. Yeah. The E is. That's all I'll say. <laughs> so that's an establishment. And, and like I said, you can have fun with stories. Yes. Uh, Brian says, you're not paranoid enough. Tieflings are out and proud as, uh, as the doppelgangers got to walk for. So, <laughs> so, but she's been so. She, you're paranoid doesn't mean it's not true. Dove Elfhart is so charming. And, uh, and, and um, I guess Torque has worn her down over all these years. And she's agreed. Uh, like Norm to, from Cheers. Yeah, exactly. To take this his hand in marriage. Day. I have not had the wedding ceremony yet. Now, uh, I've, I've, I've done a little foreshadowing of the couple people. 
we'll see uh, and, and said hey this is possibly what will happen in the uh, during this but i haven't told alan so that's one of the, yes that's one of the locations in altamira that we have created and that's right in the merchant uh, uh the merchant section right in downtown um one of my favorites another one of my favorites is um a, a recent if you want to talk about recent we're talking uh I don't know. 1992? Yeah, probably 19... No, probably later than that. The Superior Swordsman. It is a duelist training facility. Oh, okay. yes. All right. Uh, the greatest duelist in our campaign, his name is Gilliam. He has come down from where he used to be in Cowerwood and relocated here because the, there's much more opportunity for him to train individuals in the, in the skills of swordplay and fighting. Now, this is taken right from, and please, if anyone who's interested, the uh, Duelist article in Dragon Magazine talks about how building a school and what the rules are for getting a plus with a weapon and your primary, secondary hand. It's all right in that Dragon Magazine article about the Duelist, and we use that. But we have a rule, one Duelist, school per city so that kind of eliminates uh one of the most hated characters in the campaign Gilthinus, who you saw all you guys saw uh two weeks ago actually it was three weeks ago because uh right before gen con uh the son of uh swain um getting he's a duelist as well but gilliam's in the way so we don't know what's going to happen there but gilliam killed uh took down in a duel garth warmonger in two rounds once right yes no. <laughs> pre Al pre I'm sorry, pre Bill again. Bill, what's the location you like? Oh, there, there's only one true bar and location in the city itself. And that's the Violet Eyed Lady. The Violet Eyed Lady. Another great location. Okay. And this is actually owned by why don't you explain this character? Because people have never seen this character. They saw them, they saw him on um when we did that adventure a few weeks ago when they were at the Violet Lady, but go ahead, explain, explain Kruk. Yeah, well, Kruk, Kruk is, a, is a half ogre fighter who came over from another campaign uh, from a guy who used to play in our game, who no longer plays. And uh, we needed, I needed a high level character, so he was imported in from uh, another, another world, but uh, he fell madly in love. And he, you see, he's a very ugly character who is named <laughs> Kruk. Uh, modeled after our famous first baseman here in, uh, for the Philadelphia Phillies, John Crump. <laughs> he wears a helmet, a red helmet covered in pine tar because he fights with the club. He takes the baseball bat. He also carries around a stuffed possum because, you know, possums are like gods and the only thing more powerful than a possum is an armadillo because it's wearing armor. Uh, but yeah, he, he's a fun character. He plays the loot, sort of. And, uh, but yeah, he, he fell in love with uh, Walt's character, Britta Mart. And uh, that's why he named it after her. The who I doesn't think. fall in love with Britta Mart? Everyone falls in love with Britta Mart. Everyone. Yes. So the Violet Eyed Lady, which I had a start in that bar in a couple of ventures uh, ago, uh, that was uh, the, the escorts of Kelvan in that adventure we did. Uh, Kruk. Um, the entire bar is dedicated to Britomart's existence. There's pictures of Britomart everywhere. This is in the northwestern part of the map, uh, near Britomart's actual old keep that Trexler has now, in the merchant section, right on the border with the estates. So why don't we discuss the different sections real quick? Uh, so the map's broken into different sections, kind of like uh, a lot of other uh, maps. You have the Dwarven Quarter right up top. You have the Merchant Section. Whoops. See, I'm, I'm doing it in reverse. In the middle, the Estate Section in the, in the southwest. Uh, Temple Row due east. The Government Section south of that. You have the northern area where the uh, higher end residential is right here. You have, only have two gates. You have your um, Tim, Tim's on and off, on and off. And then you have the low quarter over here, which is also the squatters camps, kind of like on the border where the bow bet and the, uh, another bar, Brian, another bar, the salty dog is located. Uh, another uh, establishment. Right next to the bow bet. Yes. One of the greatest places ever. Tim's got to cut out, man. No, uh, it's not a problem, Tim. Have a good one, man. We'll talk to you soon. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll pop him off. Yeah. So talk about the salty dog there, Bill. 
Oh, it's a dive. <laughs> if there if there was a Whoops. college dive bar, that would be it. You know, the cheapest beer, the warmest beer, the worst food, that would be the place. And uh, once again, that's where my character, who lives at the Beauvet, Steyer, that's his favorite hangout. That's his favorite hangout, absolutely. So we have another location, once again, uh, lots of bars, because bars are tend to be where everyone adventures, right? That's where adventures tend to start. So uh, the Salty Dog is, an, is another uh, area right on the, the border of the good. And, you know, there's, every town has to have a CD section, right? When you grow up in a, a city, it's not going to be all peaches and cream, hopefully. So we've kind of made that when it grew, it grew too fast. So in that southeast corner, there was a bunch of people who fled during the Greyhawk Wars, in particular, all from all over the place, came into Altamira. And so they put them in the southeast section. This uh, We called it the squatter's encampment. Now, this is a really kind of disturbing, sad story. But if anyone has seen um, my player character, NPC Fion, who is actually, uh, Anna read the story uh, that she's in. Her, she came here during the Greyhawk Wars when she was younger. And uh, her whole family disappeared one night, except for she, who she used to hear these stories about the boogeyman of Altamira, and she used to sleep under her bed. She was scared because of the story. And then one morning she woke up, her whole family was gone, and never saw him again. So there's all sorts of vile things happening as well, and it happens just like in Greyhawk. You have the shape changers, you have the cult of the shriven sickle there. You have all sorts of nasty things there. So, Anna, have you ever built up a city from scratch? Yeah, kind of. I've taken well, I took Rel Devon. That was okay. not much detail about it. A little bit in Living Greyhawk campaign, but not much. And I kind of worked on it. So, so I kind of introduced the city quarters and, and I made a sketch of it and, and a whole bunch of stuff. So that's one of the cities that I kind of developed way more than that was in, in any of the, the, the kind of published content. So that that's, was my kind of adventure home for four or five years. Okay. Yep. It's... um. It's pretty cool how things like just start uh, getting a momentum mm -hmm. and it, it depended on who was doing what and who built up things. And yeah. I think that's where uh, uh, um, that's that's where I needed assistance with uh, with locations. And uh, there, there's got to be like 50, at least 50 different locations we have detailed. So another one, uh, Alan, that you can think of location wise. Anything could be it could be generic, you know. It could be. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, we have a magic users guild there, right? Yes. Okay. Ooh, and uh, Amber did it. It's yeah. a metropolis. It's we're trying. Okay, so here's a picture yep. of it. This is and a gentleman on um, um, notice that this and nailed it. Uh, an older gentleman goes, "That's from the book of treasure maps and judges guild, isn't it?" Well, we weren't. You know, we could not make something like this uh so uh you know we had, had no skill in making buildings like this so we took pilfered it from there walt actually did um so ambrel and uh, zizix so uh a gray elf fighter mage and is is walt's character and alan has zizix who's an archer mage dual class human and they got married and then they got divorced so you yes, it, divorce happens in our game too. So, uh, but they had two really kids. Divorced. What's that? You guys just abandoned him. <laughs> <laughs> all all Walt's all Walt's females never stay with the guy they're with. They just kind of wander away. <laughs> I can list thirty of Walt's characters who have done that. All right. Well, maybe maybe that's the case, but April. No. So uh, Amber left, and they, you know, legally got the separated, divorced. They had two children, right? Um, they had, uh, and they both adventure. Uh, and uh, one of them is actually in the Iron Brigade now, I, I believe, right? Yeah, I think so. A male and a female, but they were both magic users, so they started making a guild up of uh, of, of magic users. Now we, it's not a arch mage. Iron Fury, yep. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Yes, buildings are similar to Iron's or Quincy. That's, Taryn, that's a good way of looking at it. I mean, 
you only, I mean, creativity and and Brian always, uh, Sarah, uh, Brian Blomkot Saracen always says this. Uh, it's the greatest form of flattery using someone else's content, but using it in a harmless way. So a lot of the stuff that you see here may be sketches from other map sets or whatever. Uh, but you know, we're going to create our own map from scratch. Uh, a lot of this, but a lot of this content is cut is was done from scratch from a lot of players. There's there's Mark Swain's tower. Let me get back to the start again and discuss. Um, uh, go back to the other map here. Uh, where is it? Okay, here's the second map. There's the map of the entire. Uh, it's not a college. It's basically a guild. Of, the Guild of Magic Users is what the name of it I have down in as. I don't think there's any other name. Altimir Guild of Magic Users is that what it's called, Alan? I think that's what it is. So yeah, because yeah, it's not wizardry because there's no archmages there. So we just kept it. Um, we just kept it a, a guild of magic users. Now it's a cool thing because they have a spell list, and that spell book. If you if you if you venture out of Altamira, your spells are chosen from those lists. And yep. once a, once a custom spell gets in there, then it's accessible by guild members. So Knights of Yulik who are out of the city. Uh, other neutral characters that are out of the city, they all have access to the spell books uh, of, of here, just like you would in the, uh, the Guild of Wizardry and Greyhawk. So we've developed a Magic Users Guild here. Cool thing. This is in the estate section. Actually, they have there's two estate buildings right next to each other. Uh, for a while, Zizix and Amber lived right next to each other in two different buildings. Kind of keep your ex-wife close, but keep them far away kind of thing there was no animosity, <laughs> there was never any animosity no correct oh. so um good one alan guild of wizardry is a good uh one i'm going to talk about one that is unique to altamira and here's a picture i'm going to hold on this picture here i have never done this before that's going to flip back one this is yeah, my answer for what is that alan what is that? The picture of those characters. I'm looking at it. I have no idea. Wow. Home plate. I'm gonna. I'm gonna list. Sharice, uh, Farqua, Fedes. Uh, uh, the bounty hunters guild. It's the guild. It's the members that are known in the campaign that are in the Altamira Bounty Hunters Guild. Yes. And uh, Pat's on there. Uh, Cordan's on there. Um, uh, gosh, all the characters that function out of in certain adventuring groups uh there's also our two favorite for tom poo poo and kaka the, the bugbear and goblin are there they've been there since almost day one there's a whole group of and then george is the other uh the other george, george yep he's with the huntsman he's a henchman in that group so this is a group of and you don't have to be a bounty hunter class to be a member all right, but but most of them are bounty hunters. So this is where instead of an assassins guild, we have a guild of. Um, yep, that's ab absolutely right, Mark. It's 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 all the bounty hunters in here. Sharice is married to Elijah Winchester the third. She was a bounty hunter NPC. She's fifteenth level. She's a grand mistress of bounty hunters, but she's also what in Altamira, Allen, Bill, the mayor. She's the mayor. Kind of like the Nerf Gosgill. She is the mayor of, uh, and, you know, she's probably in her s late 60s. <laughs> yes. Late 60s, early 70s, because they're getting up there in age, that generation of character. Um, so she's been the mayor since day one. She's always been reelected. She's very popular. Um, trivia question. If anyone remembers, Alan, you may. What alignment did I start her out as? Chaotic Evil. No. She was... Wasn't she neutral evil? Yes. That was great. Great job, yeah. I started her off as an evil character in the, in the, in the group. This group included Swain, Murdoch, Elijah. Um, Alan, you had uh, Arathorn and Arcturus. Yep. This was a really... This is like one of the first adventuring groups we did out of the Monty Hall era. Probably... It may have been the first. What do you think, Alan? I think it was, wasn't it? <laughs> no. Wouldn't we keep, like the the Herbie and Sam group was the first. Those guys didn't come till probably like three or four years. You may be correct. You may be correct. 
I'm, yeah. I, was, I was trying to think of who else. Well, I think this was no. This is the first group, wasn't it? That all of us, the main people who are playing now, did together. Tim, you, me, Mark, Walt. Because Bill was still Bill was ninety two. I don't think Walt was. I mean, Mark was. I thought Mark had gone by then. He no. Was Mark had Swain. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. This is yeah, and uh, Tim had Tim Tim had Murdoch. Yeah, we did okay. we did Bone Hill. We did um, Assassins Knot because uh, Tim had Gridley who got killed off permanently, right? And Assassins Knot. We did that whole way up. We did Agatha Phoenix with this group. We did a whole bunch of different things. No, Agatha Phoenix was yeah. This was Agatha Phoenix. So this group eighty two eighty three Mark says absolutely. This is one of the first groups. So there was a lot of high level characters. So Cherise came from that. And she started Neutral Evil, and then as she was adventuring with these people, realized that her ways, and she ends up as a neutral good character, uh, changed her ethos completely around over the course of adventuring. Um, and another another tidbit was, uh, this is how I know, uh, um, Britta Mart was here, Elijah Winchester III, would be chased, which was another one who courted Britomart for ages and got nowhere and then realized the error of his ways that it was just like, right? And then so he ended up, he ended up with, with Charisse and now they have all the, you know, they have children and they're venturing and, and they're in Greyhawk City and, you know, so. Uh, and that's what happens in the long campaign too. You have generational characters playing. So she's, she's the, um, the mayor. You have Farquaad, who is a half orc who looks human. That's Mark's character. He just adventured just recently as well in the Escorts of Calvan adventure. And then you have Fedez, who's an NPC. He's a human who looks half work. So you figure that one out. So he's very ugly human. Uh, he's, uh, but they're two, they're two good friends. They're the, they're the assistant guild masters. Uh, they're both like a 10th, 11th level. Uh, and then you have all these other adventuring characters in other groups that are, are, are coming out of there. So, um, so Alan... Uh, Yep. What's your favorite adventuring group party? Yeah, you know, in uh, in Altamira. Based on Altamira solely. Yeah. Well, obviously the one that I named. The Omega Patrol. Omega Patrol. Okay. That's cool. Let me get this scrolling again here. I'm I'm, I'm pulling on my list though here. So I mean, when you. When you look at uh, what we've got going here, there's multi layers of things you have and just like in that just like if you were in Greyhawk City you have characters are going to be members of oh look at that Skygeth Skygeth coming in with a raid so that's pretty funny Ta -da! yes I changed it to cheesy music so we got yeah we're getting raided in by Skygeth and uh Thanks, Skagath. Really appreciate you coming in with your crew there. So, oh, there we go. Rethix. So it is, It is. we got Anna, we got Skagath, and Rethix. Three of the greatest Swedish people that I know. <laughs> so thank you, Je uh, all three awesome. of you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so very much. Great times here. So, Skagath, Rethix, thank you so very much for the resubs, guys. Sorry, uh, you guys did not... Uh, have not won anything yet, but um, everyone's getting their turn, it looks, it appears, as Taco Turtle and Celestian each won stuff on Thursday night. So, but guys, really appreciate it. So, Bill, what's your favorite it, adventuring group? Oh, boy, you know, that's tough. Uh, you, just, just out of Altamira. Okay, Sprocket. Uh... Probably. I mean, it's probably the most potent group, and the one we use the most, it's probably the Night Stalkers. Who we just used. Yeah, I wasn't here for it. <laughs> <laughs> On the escorts of Kelvin. I'm going to talk about that adventure in a second. So, with the city growing, you have, I'll give you an example, Sharice, the mayor. She's mayor of, of, of Altamira. She's the uh, a guild, the guild master, guild mistress of the bounty hunters guild. She is a, or she's um, an inactive member now of the Order of Yulik. 
she was in an adventuring party who was, wasn't named back then because we didn't name them back in the old days. So you're talking about different le levels of, of, of membership, of organization that you can have as a character. As, and that's the cool thing about city adventuring, especially like if, if you want to use one that's already built, Greyhawk's great for it. The Free City Greyhawk box set is my favorite of all time. But you can build one up yourself like we did here. And add all sorts of cool things and different layers of, uh, of of relationships. And that's what's neat about venturing around a city hub somewhere. So, um, Anna, what do you think so far? Lots of stuff, huh? Yeah, it's cool. It, it's it, good to see because <clears throat> I, I realized that there's one other city that I it, we adventured in quite a bit. That was... Um, Oh, now I'm thinking about it. The um, in in the Hornlands, Molag. That's oh, where we really. Yeah, I did, yeah I, and and one of the kind of sad bits, but I, was that I planned a hell of a lot of content, and I kind of kind of fleshed out the city a lot. And then they didn't go in there that much, so to speak. We were just superficially around it for for almost up to a year. I think we were back and forth, but they never got down into the dungeons and stuff that much. So it's still there to so I have sketched out and a whole bunch of stuff. So that's one of the things that I hope that I can kind of dig in and 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 really wow, make some that's out a, of it. I mean, future. well, you yeah. have the horn Hornlands back in the Horn Society, and wow, that would be cool. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. This was. Uh, during wow. the, the the war with Ayus and then in the uh, kind of prelude to the Greyhawk Wars, when the, when when I got the the from the ashes box set and stuff, that's when we played it. And I realized, damn, we need to go there and and, and do stuff. So so that's when I kind of I, I, can't, I, I just like the idea of, of of having an evil city, and I didn't want to have the adventures go all the way up to Doraka and involve Ayus too much. Right, so right. The, the Heriarchs became kind of a cool substitute, evil big villain. And, and and we kind of went from there. So so yeah. Awesome. So that was one of the cities that I've really <clears throat> detailed out quite a bit and made extensive dungeons and and details. So that's one of the locations I want to dig into. We only have one semi dungeon in this, and it's a hole. And we'll talk about that soon, right, Walt? If you're on, <laughs> uh, we'll get to the seedier side uh, soon. So um, hey, Jay, I'll be right back. Yes. Getting to another organization, since we're on that, and we're talking about adventuring parties, and we're trying to mix up cross over stuff, um, we created the Adventurer slash Mercenary Guild Hall at one point. Now, I have it down twice on the map locations, uh, Bill. I know uh, we have, I don't know if it's the same or it's two different. Did we make the, event, uh, the Adventurer's Guild Hall and the Mercenary Guild Hall separate? No, they essentially, I, they... That was early in my career when we did it. Yes. Uh, and it, they may have merged at one point because now the Adventurer slash Mercenary Guild is a huge influence and financial powerhouse in the in the city. It's kind of like almost like the Templars got, you know, uh, with a lot of money uh, trading going yeah. through. Um, but so it's just... The, it's the only place in our campaign where you can sell magic items and buy an educator. Yes, for the time being. Because there's a, a master plot going on, which I won't discuss that. We'll discuss that at a future time. But uh, so uh, we allow like uh, some, some stuff getting purloined off and put in there and then, at you know, kind of like a, a place to post and sell. And, uh, and 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 buy. So hey, you got this posted up, and uh, but we try not to get abuse it because that's a spot where it could go really crazy. So we kind of well, it's only stuff that party members are selling off. Right, you get half value, and then if you buy, you pay full price. Yeah, absolutely. So it is it is uh, a wand of something could be forty thousand gold. You know, uh, normal normal cost on there. Yeah. There's lots of plus one rings of protection in there. Yeah, absolutely. You can afford to buy them. So uh, you have that. You also have uh, in the government section, which we haven't talked about yet. A government section. There's uh, some uh, uh, the city halls there. You have uh, there's city gatehouses on each gate. Obviously, um, you have uh, a militia and a, a city watch. They're kind of like one and the same. Roughly of about 125 is the total, but they're all elite troops and they're all paid well. 
I mean, how elite's a first level fighter, right? We're talking about the city watch now, Alan, and the, and the yep. captain of the guard. The name of the captain of the guard it was the old um, uh, king of Spain, Juan Carlos, is the captain of the guard. He's an eighth level fighter. His daughter, Cassandra, is actually an NPC of mine in one of our groups. Um, uh, the Windborn, correct? Yep. The Windborn uh, Mercenary yep. Group. She's a fighter maester class that we have. We have a special maester that we use. So um, we have that detailed out, which is kind of cool that we uh, uh, went, went down to that. So there is a, there is uh, there's no people's constables like there is in Greyhawk. There's none of those annoying. They don't want they don't want someone. Uh, how do I put this? They're not they're not trying to rip people off, but the taxes are high enough as it is, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because of the inflation <laughs> of, of a keep like this or of a, or of a location. All right, let me uh, let me go over a couple other places uh, and a couple other uh, things, and we'll go we'll go on the mercenary groups. You have the Guild of Merchants, all right, and uh, one of them is uh, Pete and John's Teamster Service. If anyone knows about the Abel Carter Country Company that came in, they're a direct competitor. That are out of Greyhawk, Pete and John's Teamster Service. You've probably seen them in some adventures we've done. They basically are taking, you know, little mini caravans or cart groupings, and they're trading goods all over all over this area of the Flan is from Greyhawk to Hardby to Divers to Verbabank to all the Ulic States and Keeland. That's about their area of influence that they do. Uh, they don't go beyond that for the most part. Occasionally, they'll go into the shield lands. Occasionally, um, but that's about it. And I don't know if they go to Furiandi. I don't think they do. But that's that's where we have them. Uh, Pete and John are two of uh, uh, Tim's characters. They're kind of cloistered characters. One's an archer. The other one is a dual class human. Oh my god! I want to say he was started as a necromancer and ended up as a specialty priest of Bakub. Is that correct? Uh, Alan and yeah, Bill, yeah. Bob. I don't remember. Yeah, Bakub, right? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, um, so that's what they do. They're members of the Iron Brigade. What's that? Because Bakub doesn't care. Yes. <laughs> also, there is there is a merchant class in Altamira. Um, and I always did um, use the word Vaughn, uh, like Klaus von Poppen, who's, uh, and, uh, uh, Millicent, who's Millicent Vine Kessel, her father is from Altamira. Uh, so they're like the merchant class. The merchant class in um, in Altamira is kind of underhanded and, uh, you know, has some underworld connections that hasn't been pulled out yet. So that is something that uh, we, we will always develop further. Like uh, Catherine and Millicent both cannot they both despise their fathers, and that's what they're out of entering. And Mark, Mark's in. You got it working? I believe so. There you go. Mark is in. So, good to see you. Start from the beginning for what you want to discuss, like the very early eras of Altamir that you popped on. I mean, oh, since, wow. Since we started, like, just what, what's your first memory? So, my first memory of Altamira? Yeah, Anna's saying hi too, Mark. And yep. yep. Yeah, good. So my first memory of everything was probably around uh, Hoops Fruit Stand. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> ready or not. Yes, absolutely. Who, well, um, what time is it? All right. So 8.45 our time, 20 minutes. We will show Brian Blumklotz's customized heraldic shield that he did for the free city of Altamira. Okay. And it is uh, what Anna said. Go ahead, Anna. If Brian's on, uh, you want to compliment him? Because Anna's seen it. What did you say? Oh, yeah. It's it's uh, it's one of the best that, that Brian had done. I, I love it. It's it's kind of has some, some Greyhawk traditions into it. And, and it has some, some clever use of, of chevrons and stuff and and it has some symbology and i really like it mm 
So that and is I think as it fits as... right into the the, uh, the 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 Flannies the Greyhawk campaign, and and yeah, so it, it's really cool. Yep. Highest compliment you give Brian is, is is saying that I think I'm I love it too. And we went we went through uh, the uh, yes we went through yep. uh, Brian man I'm I'm honored that you have done another shield for us. We're gonna mm -hmm. like I said we'll show it in about twenty minutes and uh, it's cool looking and it has the most important logo on it that it could possibly have. Not the Order of Yolk symbol, but the kumquat. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, in so honor of the you first... explain what Hoops is, then? Yes, we explained Hoops already. We did explain Hoops. Okay. Yeah, we okay. explained that Hoops' fruit stand was the first, only it was, it was there. Kind mm -hmm. of, in Jersey, uh, if you've ever seen rural, and it's probably in other rural areas, you're driving and there's nothing for 10 miles. And there's a fruit a, a fruit stand or you know a produce stand there. And you're like, where? And there's two people there. There's no one around, and then you just you know, that's kind of the whole idea behind a, how rural it was at the time. So that's where we got the idea for Hoops' fruit stand. Plus Hoops from uh, where we worked. Um, so Mark, give us a building that you that um, in Altamira that. And not, we're not talking about. We are. You want to talk about Swain's Tower too? You can. Sure. Um, sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, basically, basically, when we started off talking about Altamira, the the concepts of it were um, the the Cavalier site is what we originally called it. Yep. And then we eventually got to a point where it was we needed other other people to kind of weigh in and do do other things. And uh, my character Swain wanted to do a tribute to Alana. And so I came up with this idea about building a tower that looked like a quiver. It was a, a play on the Unearthed Arcana magic item called the Quiver of Alana. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it was actually, the, the picture that you're seeing there was, some, was uh, based on some drawings that Bill did for us and uh, that we sent off and had uh, this custom made for us. Uh, but essentially, if you actually look at the, at the plans, they are, um, it's a concept of just a singular tower with multiple levels where the it appears that there are many towers on the top that look almost like arrows. So when you're looking from any side of the city, you always know, it, it's kind of, if you, if you think of it, if you're a Disney fan, no matter where it is that you're at in Disney, it, at, the, at the kingdom, you can always see Cinderella's castle. Right. And so the same, this is kind of like the same concept, if you will, uh, that there's always a central point no matter where it is that you're at, you can always look towards the middle and at least get an idea of where, where it is you're, you're at within the city itself. Um, but on top of it, it was also the very first place that we had that had quote unquote working elevators. <laughs> yeah, I forgot that, see? Yes. So there is a, a tremendous chain system that, is, that works through the entire uh, keep itself. That basically has, if uh, and when you when you'll see it again, I'm sure Jay, Jay will bring up the plans as, as things scroll through. You'll see in the eastern and western areas uh, there are these two. Uh, in every level, there's these uh, two squares. There you go. It's him on the right and left of the circle. Yep, right and left. Yep. Well, basically, what this is is there's there are um, men that are literally uh, basically grabbing this chain and are running these uh, carts, if you will, uh, from one, it's almost like a, dum a dumbwaiter, if you think of it that way, uh, that basically run from level to level so that you can have access to all those, all those different levels. Swain, uh, Swain's now, Swain has long since has been, de has deceased yes. again. So, um, and he well, has two, three children, two of them kind of reside in the keep. There's the Castellan lives there still. Uh, the Castellan's daughter uh, is now uh, venturing uh, Carrie D. She's off in the Reborn, but you have Gilthinus. And remember, if anyone remembers the, uh, the escorts of Kelvan, Gilthinus is the arrogant duelist we just talked about earlier, who has, you know, tells everyone he wants to Kiss, kiss his guns as he as he flexes. He's yes, and then Alicia Markham, a fighter clerk mage, is the daughter, and she's uh, she's a member of the Order of Ulic. Um, Gilthus is typical chaotic, stupid, chaotic neutral character. You know, but uh, Alicia's very is neutral good, if I recall correctly. Yes. So yeah, yes. And yeah. So yeah. Uh, he's more the daddy's girl, and he he's like the 
the middle child syndrome, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, to a degree. But but at any rate, um, so that was that was kind of the point of Swain's Tower. And because he was a fighter cleric mage, um, he attracted followers for both fighter and uh, and also cleric. And so he took took that over. And, and in fact, if I remember correctly, he also took over Gazumbas as well. At the as, time, yeah, we put, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. Because Gazumbas and then Alana something as well. happened and they all like left to go and help out at Alan's Keep. So that's another arc that we don't know uh, the reason <laughs> why as of yet, but uh, it's effectively where they've all gone. Yes, they went to retake Alan's Keep, which is sunk into. We won't talk about that, though. We won't get Alan upset tonight. So, <laughs> <laughs> already, Mark. <laughs> so I appreciate that. That uh, I forgot about the pulley system, uh, Mark. Thank you yeah. so very much for that. Uh, think. Uh, how about another building in Altamira uh, that uh, interests you? Could oh. be. A, it could be an eclectic one. I like, mean, the only other ones I know are mostly mostly player character ones. So a lot of this was developed while while I was not playing. So um, I guess the the other one that always kind of intrigued me was uh, Arturus's Archer Archer School, which we haven't discussed at all yet. So uh, yeah. uh, a little bit. So Alan, talk about um, talk about who's there and uh, and you know what what because uh, the wall. Talk about the wall too. We really didn't go into detail on that. So go ahead. So the uh, what we did with the uh, with the Arcturus, uh, I had mentioned we had a Cavalier school, but nowhere in the world did we have an Archer school. So we wanted to have an Archer school, and I figured it would be great to put it there. Um, and Jay said, "Yeah, go ahead, as long as you build a wall around the city." <laughs> so uh, it cost me hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of gold pieces to do it over the course of five years. But eventually, he built it, and um, it's walkable. The way it was that every uh, hundred feet or so, there's a little post. You can walk along top of the wall, and there's a post where archers have the little blinds that they can, or what are they called, uh, crinolines they can fire behind. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's it's a really well-defended city from that point of view. And part of your job is, as part of the training is to have to patrol the walls as the archers do. Now, I may change that with the artists that I'm looking at. That may be too impossible every 100 feet, right? For fine. Yeah. But you get the idea. I mean, it's a really cool – it's a walkable wall. It's it's like 10 foot thick, isn't it? We made yeah, it, it's very we made it super thick. We made it extra thick in yeah. case it came down. There's only two openings. There's a southern gate and a northwest gate. There's only two gates through the whole city. And uh, and the whole wall is walkable, and so his keep is in the southern tip area of 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 Altamira. If you see on this map here, yep, yep. And then on the opposite side, we built just a little like station or whatever. So you know, it, right. it's so there's two sides that we can cover. Right, exactly. There is a there is a oh, I forgot to put that on there. There is a, a um, identical. Um, was it identical or a little smaller? Smaller. Yeah, yep. a smaller. Uh, that should be in the residential north side district, right and, on the on that and the, the in the Dwarven quarter border. Okay, cool. And, and in actuality, so so this is the first time that I've seen this map. Um, so I'm assuming that I just made this. I just made this a couple of days ago. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say I thought, and I could be obviously completely wrong, but I thought the wall actually connected all the Cavalier sites. That, that the city itself was an was an isosceles triangle. No, no, the the the, the three buildings were the three keeps were supposed to be an isosceles triangle, but then we they weren't on the wall. The only thing on the wall is is our Taurus um, Archer School. That was the only thing okay. we said we wanted on the wall. So no, we, it went around out on the outside of it, and we're, I, we believe it's a one. Anna, what's the size of this? A one mile, one mile radius, two mile diameter. Is, I mean, Say, so what do you mean of the of the whole of the city? We decided it was a one mile radius from the center of Swain's <clears throat> tower to the wall. I mean, I don't even know what Greyhawk is. I don't. I don't think we have uh, said the exact size, but the, the 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 symbol is is in itself like five, six, seven miles across at least. But that that's a symbol. So the town can be. I think we we said it will be a large town. So up right. to like and a half thousand people or something like that right okay all right yeah. so, so uh a, a one mile i don't i don't know the scale so of that wall wise it's kind of yeah it, it sounds very right. reasonable yeah 
So yeah, Skagath puts out a, a, a key point, and that is you never have basically you never have enough money uh, when you're venturing, and then with strongholds, maintenance, villages, all that stuff, uh, you, all that money you made is a drop in the bucket, right? <laughs> yeah. For for for. Yeah. So uh, what what I did with Skagath was I made a huge. If someone wanted to build something, so we didn't have to go over a maintenance thing every year, or or just I made them pay an exorbitant fee to get the plot land that would take care of taxes, uh, would take care of all the maintenance fees and stuff. I'm talking too much, about too much detail to worry about. That's yeah, okay. yeah. So we got we got in there and like. Uh, really rape these guys uh, as far as when it comes to uh, raking them over the coals on uh, on a mount and that way you know we got to have that taken care of as far as uh, funding but it's Plus, a great we don't really adhere to the feudal system there's not really a whole lot of taxation and stuff if i remember correctly yeah that happens it's most, true sky is, is most of the big people that live there are actually funding most of the city coffers right and because of the agreement with the county of ulick there is a small amount of taxation that goes to the county to keep the county appeased because it is a free city but it is put with permission of the count of ulick back in the day and then that is kind of how we get around the uh the count of ulick cannot come in anna and say uh take uh you know take control of all the troops there the order of ulick would never have that uh, you know that's why we say it's a free city now if someone else wants to say something differently in their campaign uh, once you know when it's on the map so be it you know it's fine you know every, everyone can say yeah or do but we've always had it as a free city so yeah all right uh some other organizational areas um uh, and some other locations we haven't talked about. Uh, we did the Bobet and the Salty Dog already, Mark, just so you're aware yeah, of. I, I was on when Okay. Uh, uh, Mother's Delight Pastry Shop. Okay, there's one. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Tress's Leather Works. The Clubbed Foot. I guess that's a cobbler. It is, actually. The, the uh, yeah. Dazzling. The Tickling Feather. No, that's the Diamond Lake. Oh, okay. That's one of Bill's. That's that's <laughs> that's Bill's character Salen's favorite place. Oh, okay. yes, that's in Diamond Lake. We'll go uh, there and break their bones. Yes, the spiked mallet, the lucky loot, dazzling duds, the plate factory. Right, there's a lot of the locked coffer, Vinyamar Gardens. How could we forget that? That is, um, uh, isn't that Mulch's place? That's Mulch's um, yeah. establishment. Yeah. All right. That's just a number of locations. Uh, Melita's Tea and Co an Herb Shop. <laughs> oh, fun times. Tim's neighbor across the road. Yes. The Inn of the Laughing Yak. Oh, you have yaks in the area. Yeah, in the, in the hills, in the mountains. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Um, here, all right. So, in one of the sections... <laughs> <Talk to yourself. laughs> nice. The pastry shop. All right. Let's see. Uh, uh, let's see the description underneath uh, the pastry shop there, Skagath. Let me find that again. Mother's Delight Pastry Shop. Here's what it says. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, this is owned and run by Sarah Lee. Okay. Uh, and she's a, a neutral good human female. She is a retired thief who would rather live a normal, quiet life. Prices are high, but the pastries from the shop are the tastiest in all of the county of Yulik. Boy, no copyright infringement there. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, that's, that's, so Boy, that's, that's worse than our buddy Len. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh we, we always mentioned, you almost mentioned it. <laughs> oh, almost. Still Sarah with an H at the end. Yes. Ah, okay. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> so, so everyone uh, hopefully will hope Leonard gets well soon. He fell on vacation. Yes. And had a big gouge oh. on his head. And uh, the pictures were on Facebook, but it's getting better. But he has a whole black and blue face now. So everyone, uh, I will not in jest, I'll say, hey, let's wish Leonard Lakofka gets well soon. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. On that. So, uh, yes. So there you go, Skagath. That's Mother's Delight Pastry Shop. Let's see what else we got here. The row of uh, uh, Temple Row which is to the east of the um, main uh, merchant section, north of the um, 
government section and right next to Elijah's, uh, by the way, I named uh, Elijah's uh, uh, keep Winchester's pinnacle. How's that sound? I think, uh, I think Trexler, you should name yours. And I think Rasta should name his as well. They've never, I mean, we have a bunch of keep, named keeps now. We haven't really didn't name keeps back then. Right. So let me just think about that. Weren't we talking about giving, having Trexler give it to somebody else? We were, but uh, we could not find a gray elf that wanted it. So that remember, we wanted to have a Grey Elf Cavalier or Knight class, right? Because I mean, he Trexler is uh, one of our Monty Hall characters who are not brought up from first, right? Well, it almost feels like it should go to a real character. Well, um, if we have, maybe there'll be one down the road that will make sense to have. You know, absolutely. Sounds like new first. Oh my gosh, man! Sounds like it to me. The following, the following deities have uh, on on Temple Row have churches of large size, okay, or of a decent size, and they are the following: the largest two, number one being Clangadin Silverbeard, because of course Schlemmen had to have the largest of all of them, right? And the second is of course the order of the uh, one of the Order of Yulik deities that is not a Greyhawk deity, Uko. It's finished deity, but we use we use them from the we use them right from the deities and demigods before we even knew who the Greyhawk deities were back in back in the day. Other temples are to Alana, Arleth Lutheranol, which is a, an elven god for uh, that's the Drow hunter. All right, and that was Devit uh, built that one. A uh, dark elf actually built it to hunt her own kind, which is kind of you think about it, really disturbing that a dark elf would do that on their own dark elves, but she's good. Um, and the most recent one, Bill, is what? Red Knight. The Red Knight, a ported over deity from Forgotten Realms we use. And why do we use this deity? There really isn't a lawful, a straight lawful neutral or a pure lawful war god. Because the Red Knight can be lawful good, lawful neutral, or lawful evil. Yeah, it's um, we looked and there's like not a god of of tactics, tactical combat, right? Is really what the red knight is. Yeah, I mean there 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 is one, but who it, it was never really developed. Uh, it, it's actually Hexter and Heronius's brother Stratus. Which really has never been detailed. Uh, I don't know if that publicated any in, in a publication anywhere. So we're we're not beyond pulling stuff that makes sense. We've used the, we pulled Talos in, which is the Storm Lord we call, which is chaotic n neutral with evil tendencies, but still can be done by chaotic neutrals in our game for the god of uh, of violent storms and uh, the Red Knight, which is the god of uh, tactical combat. That we allow, uh, they're the two that we brought in. Now there's others. If you look right in the Forgotten Realms book, there's Finnish deities throughout that. My Leaky's in there, and that's a Finnish deity. Yeah. There's a whole yeah. bunch of them. Ilmater is a Finnish deity, right? There are a whole bunch of them in there. So uh, we're not beyond doing that. So with through the Temple Row, um, we were we were always there's room for a couple more large churches. We wanted to put them in the same worshiping area. I think just to not. Um, say one was over the others, but uh, but the, the you know uh, the first couple ones, particularly Kanga and Nuko, got large large uh, establishments there just because of the worshiping there. Also, within Swain's Tower is a is a church in the lower level. Yes, it of, is actually of, it is actually a temple to Alana as well, as it, which is in there because that's his deity yes. Alana as well. So um, I don't. Can you think of any others that I missed that, that wanted to go in there or or I thought at some point we talked about Farling was one of them because he's the traveler since we were out in the middle of nowhere. I thought somebody at one point wanted to do that. We don't, yeah. And I created a special piece of Farling and no one's played one. So I yeah. think that's why it wasn't built. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. Farling is one. You have to get first level. Yeah. <laughs> you have to get now, through now you have two. So you're going to have well, one that's going to be specific to make that special priest and one that's going to take over. Grail, Grail Cavalier and especially Priest of Farling. Oh, Farlang. my God. Yeah, but Farlang, the, the specialty Priest of Farling, you have to get past both your, your I want to be the coolest fighter in the world period and your Monty Hall period because the, they seem to be both poor and, and not much of fighters. Yes. That's all, yeah. 
uh, 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 Bill, your iPad went off. Oh, yeah. Can you hear me still? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. oh, that's weird. Your pick went off. Hmm. It's all right. You may just, okay. There you go. Sometimes that stuff happens. So in that area, we, we would always, if there was a deity that was uh, worshipped in a large amount, we would add it or they would uh, we'd get permits to build it. There is plenty of land, plots of land here. All right. An area we haven't talked about. Oh, 846. All right, Brian. We're gonna, let's show this. All right. We got 45 minutes left. Number one good thing we're going to show. Here it is. It's going to come up in two parts because it's going to uncover some things I have it behind. Here is the city of Altamira, heraldry created by Blind Blumklotz. After a lot of trial and error uh, between us, um, we he came with the first one he had made. So uh, here we go. Da -da 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 -da. Oops, I, I, I went up with the wrong thing. Oh, that was stupid of me. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> that's awesome yeah it is fantastic yeah. it pays yeah. okay cool. it pays homage to all the Yulik states it has their colors principality Yulik is white uh duchy Yulik is is purple and county Yulik has gold in it so it pays homage to all of them the embattled symbol that brian created here uh shows that it is a walled city right and we tried messing around with the Order of York symbol on there. It just, it's too much. And Anna, who has shrunk it down, sent me a copy of it. It looks great on the, on the, on the big scale map because it's not too busy. But we had to have the kumquat on there. Of course. So That's what a kumquat looks like? Well, it's a little bit longer, but that's just, the, Brian, yes. Brian did the best he could. It, that is our kumquat, yes. Yep. So uh, hopefully everyone likes that. Yes, Rox. Uh, hopefully you all like it. Brian did a uh, you know a great job with it. I love it. It'll go in my scroller. So it'll be scroll. Every single piece of heraldry that's our own goes into our scroller from this point on. You will see it from now on with all the other uh, shields up uh, starting, on thir uh, starting on Thursday night. I love it. Um, Brian, thank you so very much. It is awesome. And uh, like I said, it looks great on that map that Anna has put on there. So... Yes, it is a heraldric orange, but there is a little difference between that and a kumquat. Yes, thank you. So uh, I am going to keep this up. I'll just, I'll just shrink this and put this in a corner <coughs> somewhere if I can. Here, hold on one sec. For the, so we'll keep this up. Okay. There we go. We'll leave that up there for now. A nice large size. All righty. And look at that. I'm going to curse myself. No, no <laughs> freezes, no drop frames. Woo! <laughs> yeah, it is, Gagath. It is awesome. Brian, uh, uh, like I said, Saracenus, Brian Blumklotz, everyone knows. He does a lot for the Greyhawk community. He uh, uh, ma manages the Cannon Fire. He's the admin for the Cannon Fire Facebook site. He is uh, one of the two admins for our, our Discord server and has done a lot of contributions for us. And I am uh, really honored that he is, uh, a, a, you know, a Greyhawk companion and a friend of mine now. And thank you so very much, Brian. Like I said, if you ever get your Patreon up, I'm your first sign up. That's all, you know, absolutely. So uh, one day, though. Yep. It is beautiful shield and, uh, and uh, adds just to all the other shields yep. that he's done. All the shields you see on the left, they're all Brian's creations for us. And this, uh, whoops, wrong side. This is Brian's as well. Everything, is, you know, so thanks. And uh, let's see. Where was I? Talking about, um, oh, we haven't talked about the estate. Yeah, you, you talked about a lot of land being open. There's a lot of land open in Altamira still, uh, particularly um, in certain quarters. So in the north quarter, it's like the higher end residential area. We put that there's a lot, and I'm going to have uh, openings for it. That's for new adventurers to come in. Adventurers have a lot of coin, but the estate section is kind of filled. Now, if you look on the map, yes, <laughs> you look on the map here, the estate section's right here. It's a large swath of area. Of course, you know, the rich, snobby people are here. But I have a whole, I've, I detailed these out years ago. And the estate section, I think, has... It's kind of like the high quarter and the garden quarter in Greyhawk City. Um, where is it here? All right, here we go. Here are some of the here are some of the individuals, all the ones detailed. I think there's room for one more. All right, so uh, 
Arathorn's wooded area is in this area. It's uh, but it's it's right near uh, Brittlemart's Keep. Okay, so it's like a small circular area. That's it. that's your wooded area, Arathorn. Uh, the fortified manor house of Zizix, which is the College of Wizardry now. Or the, I'm sorry, the, the, I'm sorry, the not the College of Wizardry, the Guild of Magic Users. Uh, Ambrose fortified manor house, who she sold it to Lena. Now Lena lives there. That is all right. So Walt has done a great job on mapping, making maps. So let me. I'm going to start scrolling it from here. There's the, the 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 next like eight maps are Walt's. All he wrote did these all up for all his characters that are in this area. So you'll you'll, you'll be seeing them come up. The fortified estate of Harley Abdallis, who is Herbie's sister-in-law, right? Yep. Yes, she's a high-level ranger. She has relocated from the Duchy of Ulick. Let's see, the fortified manual, manual house of Captain Beauregard, a, a high elf fighter thief. Uh, there's another one. The uh, Let's see. The vacation home of Funk and Heidi Peak is here. <laughs> um, Twerk, you do, have a, you do have a location here, too. But you, you have a... What's that? Right across the street from the uh, yeah, that's not yeah, that's that's okay. So that's where that is. Uh, the vacation home of the Relforce family, Duke Wilborn, has a, 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 a from Celine, the second in command. Not in our campaign, it's not Melf. It is Duke Wilborn. They have a vacation home here. All right, now the, here comes the city hall. Also, you see all this stuff scrolling is all Walt's maps for his buildings. A lot of them are in this section. Uh, the Church of Clangadin is going to come up soon. There's all sorts of things coming up in this one that Walt has done. So anything on grab paper that's coming up next, it's all Walt's for all his locations in here. The merchant, Klaus von Poppen, has a big estate here. We know him, about him and his warehouses and uh, the buka and all that. Um, there is a high-level um, individual. Um, I really haven't talked about this. Uh... His name is uh, Leif Lothbrook, like 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 from there. Bill, you lost your picture again. Um, but his, his real name is something different. He, uh, he is a cavalier. I'll tell you a little story. He's impersonating a cavalier. He's actually a barbarian who um, uh, tried to um, depose King Hungrid, uh, one of Walt, Walt's uh, uh, the one that Walt's character married and and uh, and, and, the, and the Frost Barbarians. So one of the guys who tried to depose him actually fled to Altamira. little secret there. And then there's this black tower with no entrances in this area. So uh, someone want to talk about that? Bill, are you there? Uh, did we lose Bill completely? Maybe. I think we lost him. He's rebooting. Alan, uh, Mark, you want to talk about the Black Tower and what, what, what its significance is? With no windows, doors, or anything, there's a black cylindrical tower in the estate section. Well, to me, it always reminded me of this, of, uh, Dark I gotta get a dragon lance in here, is uh, the Tower of High Sorcery. Okay. It's Raceland's Tower. Kind of, yeah, maybe it's an ironic situation, maybe not. Yeah. But what that tower was, uh, we have a, a class called the Shadow Mage in in, in, uh, in our campaign. And anyone who was a Shadow Mage who is going to venture an adventuring party in Altamira got drawn to this area here and kind of got like mental instructions from this tower to do this, this, and this. And they've gotten these brooches that enhance their spells. And no one knows who these came from or who is who lives there. And uh, no one in the city will say anything. No one of high ups is a, you know, we can't discuss that. So there's this large tower. No one has ever seen coming or going from it. There's no entrances. It's completely smooth on the outside. So there's, this, and someone paid a lot of money to put this tower up. And it's kind of a long-term plot line for me. So um, we'll see what happens with that one. But like I said, I try and implant a lot of these in the game that I can go to. Um, um, uh, when needed. So, um, yes, it's a dark tower, right, from the game. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. Hey, uh, Will, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Enjoy your game. So, um, that's 
kind of where I wanted to go next was the seedier side of Greyhawk. I'm sorry, listen to me about Um Let me know if um, uh, guys, if uh, Bill responds back to his uh, to the text, he may have uh, lost. He may it may have just died on him. Yeah. Um, the seedier side. Let's start with the Thieves Guild. <clears throat> Alan told this uh, this story a couple weeks ago. Tell it in synopsis again about Highport and Sam. So Sam was a uh, is is my highest level thief, seventeenth level or eighteenth level. Um, and he owns upstairs at Sam, downstairs at Boyd's. Right. And for a while, Jay was running a, a, a like a side campaign for Tim and myself uh, in Highport, and it was basically just all thieves, and we had a blast doing it. We would go around raising all sorts of mischief and things like that. nothing too bad. We were always on the side of good. So if we found somebody was you know, doing something unfair, we would go rob them and give the money back to whoever they were being unfair to. Things like that. Uh, and we did, of course, keep a little bit of something for ourselves. Well, eventually we started growing into guilds. Uh, Lubin got a guild, and then so Sam got a guild. And one of Sam's um, one of Sam's thieves was a cavalier who got basically booted out of the life of cavalier and went to thievery. Uh, and needless to say, he was an awful thief. Um, he had a very low dexterity, but a very high strength. So what he'd do is he'd try to pickpocket something, buddy, and if you got caught, he just broke your arms and took your money anyhow. So, um, he would say he was in jail all the time. And I had to bail him out, spent probably tens of thousands of gold pieces getting him out of jail, bribing people to get him out of jail, and whatever. Well, finally, things got too hot in Altamira. And, and, and Highport, yeah. After they got assassinated. They got raised again, or re resurrected, or whatever happened, and they got out of town and just kind of left the thieves' guild to fend for themselves. Well, the the cavalier thief got all sorts of annoyed at Sam, forgetting of all the good things he did for him, and decided that he was going to get rid of Sam, kill him, and so he moves to Highport and opens up the high the Highport thieves' guild, uh, in which no. Halflings, gnomes, or dwarves are allowed in. Uh, we say that so he this his name's Lord Drarius the Deposed. He was a minor nobility in the Wild Coast. He lost his estate and all his titles and all because he was a chaotic neutral idiot. Like he'd gamble, he'd womanize. <laughs> yes, so yes. Okay, so a typical chaotic, stupid quote unquote chaotic, stupid character. So he ended he was destitute. He ended up dual classing to thief. And ended up in the Thieves' Guild in Highport of Sam. And he was terrible at it. And he had no patience for it. Because why should he, right? He's just ex-cavalier. Well, when Sam and Leuven left, he took it personally, like a typical chaotic neutral will, and sought, sought a lifelong goal, one goal, to ruin Sam's existence. Very slowly... And very methodically, because that's what a typical chaotic, stupid character who has nothing better to do with his life does, right? So he has worked his way up secretly. And he is now the guild master in Altamira of the Thieves Guild. All right, he has taken over the Thieves Guild, and he is a dual class, like he's seventh level cavalier, thirteenth level thief. He's dedicated his profession to thievery now. And he is going to get revenge on Sam. And he has started his revenge on Sam with long-term planning. First off, no halflings. That, uh, By the way, that's not 100% true. Gnomes and dwarves can buy their way into the guild with an expensive purchase. Because uh, Tim's dad, uh, John, his character, bought his way into that guild. If you guys remember. I think it was her name was Sophia. Mark, is that correct? Something like that. Uh, Think yeah, I think she was a, a maester thief you guys had. Um, yeah. and, and halflings are forever banned from the guild because of Sam. So, <laughs> yeah, you like that scene? <laughs> I got out of laughing. All right. So what's even better now is that... The poor halflings. Yep. Yes, the poor halflings. But this has gotten the attention of someone else. And that, that happens to be, and I've shown this many times, the ever great Yubin Had has heard about the, the prejudice against halflings in Altamira and has group organization Spunk has now come into Altamira to fight the Thieves Guild of Drarius the Deposed. So they are there now. And the Spunk stands for the Short People's Union for Nefarious Kleptomaniacs. 
Uh, this is right. Yes, you like that? This is right. This is a Roger Moore article, Dragon Sixty, called "Midgets in the Earth." It's one of the funniest articles ever written. And you've been had. Mark has played. You've been had a couple times, yep. right? So yep. he, he's like a twentieth level halfling thief. Um, but getting back to Drarius. The Boogeyman of Altamira, we've talked a little bit about this monster that roams the streets at night. And the squatting area where all these refugees came in during the Greyhawk Wars was filled, overfilled. At that time, should I tell it, should I give it away, Mark? What do you think? Yeah. Okay, okay. Jarius got a bounty hunter and, and a couple other people. So you have upstairs at Sam's, downstairs at Boyd's. Boyd was is, is is Walt's cleric illusionist gnome. They took him. He's neutral good. They knocked him out unconscious. They put a helm of opposite alignment on him. This happened about 20 years ago in real time. He's neutral evil now. All right. Hey, hey, Brian, thanks, man. Oh, thank you. Uh, you got to go. No problem, uh, Brian. Thank you so very much for, for, for watching. You have that link already for Anna, so you can get access to that stuff. And as soon as we're done, as soon as I'm done this story, we're going to put up the, we're going to put up the Anna link for everyone. Uh, so, Boy's Neutral Evil now. There are some really nasty illusionist spells for evil illusionists. So he's now Neutral Evil. He's part of the plot now against Sam, who he kind of is in business with. Well, he saw the squatters in that encampment as vi as basically vermin. So he has he does he is the mo he is the boogeyman of Altamira. He actually will go and he will actually kidnap all these people, take them into a dungeon he has, and do awful experiments on them, or like and do death fogs and all sorts of things. It's really nasty and disgusting. But there is no indigent. Uh, this is awful to sound. There's no indigent bad population in Altamira because they disappear all the time because of this neutral evil gnome illusionist, cleric illusionist that's doing all this stuff. So the plot is thickening now as to what this is going to be a super high level arc. Probably when I retire from my job, when I'm 60, I'm going to do this at some point and finish this off once and for all. So you have the Boogeyman of Altamira is actually a player character that Walt plays. Uh, yeah, very crazy. He plays him very well. It's really disturbing. Uh, I, I mean, I can't even imagine it was, what would happen if it was in Tim's hands. It would be way worse. Yeah. But that, so that's the, the that's some of the seedier side of what's going on in Altamira. The Thieves Guild is really a nasty organization. Kind of like you get the feeling in Greyhawk, it's kind of like there for maybe the good of Greyhawk occasionally, even though you know, the River Quarter incidents and stuff happen. This organization in, in Altamira is 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 kind of uh, not for for the good of Altamira at all. This is for milking as, as much money as they can out of Altamira. So something's going to give it a head at some point with them there, with Spunk now there, and with these people, you know, and once again, uh, the lesser for less fortunate people of, of anywhere kind of slip through the cracks. No one's paying attention. And it's kind of a sad thing when you think about it, but that's kind of like, not everything is all rosy in, in the, in the world. So, uh, yes. Um, we talked about Mark. We talked about um, uh, Gilliam. I, were you on then? We talked about Gilliam and his. Okay, we talked about the, the duelist school and how um, it was only one allowed per per city for the most part. That was just a rule we had. Um, any other locations that you'd like to discuss? Hmm. Um, I mean, you hit on all of the real major ones. Um. Other than maybe, did you talk about uh, the Garden Militia? Yes, I did. I talked about Juan Carlos and the Garden Militia. Yes, we did. Yeah, we did. We talked about him. We talked about how uh, you know they're they're very uh, non corruptible. He keeps a you know he keeps a very good. I think he's lawful neutral. Actually, he's not good. He's lawful neutral. So he does right. exactly what the law tells him, and uh, and uh, you know he's uh, keeps a, that a, a tight ship. He he sends adventuring parties on quests a lot. Oh, we haven't even talked about that yet. Let's talk about this, then we'll go to Annis. I have updated the Altamira and it's scanned through. The Altamira Mercenary Group has updated, has been updated and ranking, and it should come up next here. 
It should come up right here. So I, I moved up. There it is. The Orc Defenders against Slavey, then the Night Stalkers Huntsmen, the Omega Patrol, and the Reborn have moved up in rank because of their adventuring that they've been doing. Theo's Heroes has dropped. The Fighters of Light Altamira are not getting traction like they are in Harby and Greyhawk because people can't stand Foltis in Altamira, correct? That is one. Foltis in all Greyhawk. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean. It's not just limited to Altamira. That's Jesus. a player character. That's that's you guys being a little prejudiced against them because they do get the job done in in Greyhawk City, They're, you know. But uh, but in Altamira, where it's all player characters, people don't like Foltis, the lawful neutral aspect of them. So they have dropped. And then the Altamira Enforcers, you know, led by uh, William the Enforcer and uh, the, the Windborn, and then this small group. No one's asked me about. Every copper counts. It is a it is a group of halflings that worship Zilchis. Yep. So we will see what happens with them. So out of this, there are seven adventuring groups of player characters on this list, and there are their pictures in the lower right hand corner. And that's it's starting with the Ulic Defenders Against Slavery here, and then the next, all, they'll all be in rank. All every group except for the Fighters of the Light will be shown in order of, uh, and that's all player characters uh, that we play. Seven of our uh, adventuring groups are out of this city. It's a very important city for us. Okay. So hopefully I can do this. Anna has sent us, uh, why don't you explain what you have done and what's going well, on if people don't know for, your, for yeah, the map. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I do regular updates of the, uh, the my Flannies map. And now I've done a revision of, I did a, one big one from last year to, to the previous one, to, to the 2019. That way I changed the, the background terrain. I edited that and there were hundreds of place names. But then the, the book, the, the Ghost of Salt Marsh came out and they kind of tweaked with the area a bit. So I had to, to, to make a kind of revision to that. And then this the Altamira and probably about a, a dozen or it's about 25, 30, maybe 50 new additions to the map. And so I call it the revision one, the 2019 revision one. So it's the the uh, it's a it's a mild update, so to speak. And the the it's not a major addition; it's just a revision. And the difference is that I will not update all the different versions of the map because that will take me a month to do that at least. So so there will be a JPEG, a PDF, and there will be some extra goodies that I'm working on right now for for my patrons coming out a little bit later. So there will be a new really cool. Uh, hang on a second, I can probably show a little bit from if okay. i do this and we can look at here oh, okay that, cool there will be a new version of the um a, a completely new version of the map that hasn't been around before that i think could be kind of cool as a handout version nice and there will also be a, a new ver a Photoshop version for my top level patrons that will come later uh, to everybody, but it will be, um, that has over 40 layers, 43 layers, everything is layered and, and there's exported properly and transparent and stuff. So you can go in and mask out and put in whatever you want without having to have Illustrator. You have to have Photoshop though. That's the the, uh, the tricky bit. But I'll see if I can, I'll, I'll also make new spread map versions so that I will shrink that down in size so you can use GIMP and stuff to open it. Beautiful. So there's a, a, an updated version of the map. That's will be probably the, might even be the final version of the 598 map because eventually I think that one will be phased out because now the work will be on the 576 map instead. So this map will now be the base for the 576 map with the new Ghost uh, Salt Marsh and a whole bunch of stuff. And I have probably about, uh, I think it's six, seven new pieces of heraldry. A couple of them are Brian's, um, Altamira. And the rest of them are th uh, heraldry that I found from the, um, uh, the, the Greyhawk, the, the box set. That awesome. Jeff easily made the, um, this image here has like three, I think, yeah, three pieces of heraldry. And so, so I actually uh, took a little bit of help from, from the community and Brian and others and extracted them and placed them in the Wild Coast area. So that those, 
all those shields are included as well. And there's a bunch of other small additions and a couple of typos that have been, been corrected and stuff. So that will be the, probably the, the, will definitely be the final overhaul on the 598 map for this year. And then we'll see whatever the interest is, because I think that as soon as the 576 map is out, I think the majority of people will probably, that will be the base, so to speak, for, for, for mapping going forward. So, so that will come later this year, and my patrons will have a first touch of that probably in about a month or so. The, the first couple of areas, will I will release it realm by realm for my patrons as I go forward, so to speak. Yep. That's awesome. And then it will come to everybody later this year. Yep. So we are honored to be on our first we have our own you know yes. Anna does custom mm -hmm. stuff for us which we love but this is the first time we've had our one of our locations actually make the 598 map and Altamira is on there with the heraldry yep. thank you so much Anna for adding it and that's why we are going a major project of us is to create an actual playing map so if anyone you know you go through and you see there's a do we have a diver's map? Do we have, you know, there's stuff out there. You got to search for it. We want to have a map that's accessible to be used for all yep. these locations we're talking about. So that's a major project of mine or my group to get that done, to link up with a professional artist to do it. I got a couple of people in mind and, uh, and, uh, and it's cool with that. And then she'll back to oh, di yeah, the digital image from there. Yeah. yeah. And this is a perfect example. Another perfect example. I usually take my bridges, all articles and all the stuff he did for all, but this is another perfect example. You took a little hole in, in the, the, the content of, of that was an opening that, that area kind of needs a town it deserves a town that that is kind of a, a major intersection between three roads and and there is not that much content in that area so you kind of took it you filled it and and now you will provide the community with more stuff and so on so that is a perfect example of of things that i want to have on the map because i want awesome. the map to not only be be the the things that were done back in the day but also cool things that add to the greyhawk experience if you want to play on great in greyhawk and you there's a lot of cool fans creation stuff and it doesn't replace any of the official content i definitely want it on my map so so, so there, this is a perfect example of it thank you so very much i'm gonna press this button let's see if this works so this is only for patreons but if you're on watching our show please yes feel yeah. free to use that yep, now yep. explain it's what's going to happen with this link Oh, uh, this link will go to my Dropbox, and it will you will get a little error message, but it will say a little blue button, said open with, and go down and take download, and you can download. The, the reason you get an error message is that the file is too large to open in a web browser. So that's why you get the error message. So it's the link should function. I've tested it on two computers, and, and there's a couple of other people have tested it for me. So you go, there should be a little blue button. First, it says that something wrong, something went wrong. And then there's a button that says open with, and you there's a you can click and and oh yes it's yes, a free yes absolutely Taryn it free download it doesn't cost a penny yep it is it, it's not it 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 I swear what's that what's that Alan? It, it works great good awesome Thank you. perfect yep normally this is hundred megabytes something in in size so it's normally. A, 29,000 pixels across. Normally it would be only available with Patreons, but Anna has allowed all people who are watching our show and who yep. are going to be watching the vid later on, they can fi go find that link there and yep. you have at it, guys. And yep. because, we, you know, you it's get to see the logo. Yep. yep, absolutely. It's a preview a couple of weeks early and, and it, it will be available for everyone on my website within a couple of weeks. That so, is so awesome. Along with yeah, PDF incredible. version and, and and some other goodies as well. There will be an online version of it, and there will also be a World Anvil version. Oh, um, wow. Yes, I'm, I'm working. I've got a World Anvil license, and I'm really pleased with how maps are working. So I'm going to, to uh, start putting it in there, too, and, and see what I can do with that, too. So, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. I'm looking at it now. Oh, thank you no. yeah yep. dude and that's that's an update now this is not ours this is not an order of yulik one this, this is, is the, a the, general the, my public version it's my general public. version exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have a version just like if there is one version for knights of ulik that you guys use yeah. i also have a, a campaign version for my yeah. campaign that is drastically yeah. different in some areas but this is the kind of the the, the best of version that this that is, is the the kind of for everyone for everyone yes yeah, so we yep. find, we mm -hmm. have a location there yeah Yep. So, so I hope there will be more locations to come. So yep. 
And this is also a thing that because I, from time to time, people come and say, oh, I've invented this little cool thing. How do I get it on the map? And and bribing me might work, but it's the, the <laughs> way is to bribe me and make sure that it's out there in the general community. If if you go to, to Greyhawk online and, and publish articles about it, write about it, and, and the community likes your content, then it will definitely, that's the quickest, easiest way to, to, to get on the map, so to speak. And also don't replace content that's already there. If you make right. a new version of Greyhawk City that is called something else, that will not show up on my map. But if you find some remote area that doesn't have any content and you come up with some cool little cult that is up there somewhere, that might cut directly to to be on the map. So what our goal is now, gentlemen, is an area that's devoid of the map is Celine, and that's where we're yes. going to concentrate on mm -hmm. our Celine content. So um, yep. we're at nine sixteen here. I know we didn't cover every single thing about Altamira, but let's um, let's talk about what's going on uh, with everyone. And uh, so, Mark, are you playing tomorrow night? And what are you doing? Yes. Yes, so tomorrow night will be the continuation of Slap. Uh, so the characters had uh, just gone through what I did as a kind of spoof on The Wizard of Oz. Uh, so for those of you who are familiar with the movie, there are actually two roads. So there's a yellow brick road and there is a reddish copperish road. Yeah. And so I thought it would be kind of interesting to see what happens if you go down the copperish road. So. Um, so it was, it was a you know nice kind of play on uh, on different things. Gave me the opportunity to also introduce uh, some new magic items into the into the campaign that I actually created. So, um, but they are going to be continuing um, the uh, the set of adventures that they have been doing. Um, so they are still in the Dwarven City, uh, just north of the Lortmo Mountains, uh, and are going to be continuing down there. So I don't want to give anything away. Uh, at this point, but um, that's what uh, we're going to be doing tomorrow. So from six o'clock to nine o'clock Eastern time, uh, please feel free uh, right here on the Lord Gives On the channel. Yes, uh, Mark, thanks. And uh, we got Rox, who's been um, a, a new mod for that. And thank you. Uh, uh, the, his name's Bill as, as, as well. So we got another Bill in, in the mix here. But Rox has been uh, modding that if I'm not available. And that's awesome. So uh, we'll be hitting that up tomorrow night. And uh, I'm assuming, Alan, your next thing is going to be playing uh, on Thursday, right? That's correct. And we'll get back to that. Uh, Anna, what do you got going on on your last uh, show of the season for Legends and Lore? We haven't Wednesday? really decided yet. We had okay. a couple of people that we wanted to be on the show, but the problem is that we haven't got a firm commitment from either of them, so it's kind of an open question so far, but why don't you go over uh, 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 if you don't have anything, go over your 598 update. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. That will be in there and I will show some more uh, cool versions of it because there will be a, a kind of hopefully a follow-up to the handout maps that I have that, that it's the one you saw a little bit sneak peek of here. Cool. That will be better, so to speak. And I will also talk a little bit maybe more about my projects to come, so to speak, because I've, I've showed <clears throat> talked a little bit to my patrons about various other cool things that, that I'm, I want to work on and quickly. So, And I also want to, to have some things, if my patron goes really well, there are some, some cool things that I want to do. So I will definitely talk about that too. Yep. Awesome. Appreciate that, Anna, and thanks for coming on uh, tonight oh, too. And thank you so and, much for having me and giving yeah. that gift. That was so awesome. That was. Uh, that was. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, that, that that was fantastic. All right, so we are we are chock full of now that I'm back from Gen Con, now I'm back from vacation, and now that like the school year is starting up soon for kids. Now we're chock full of, of content, and we got a lot going on. Starting uh, tomorrow, we got you know Mark's games back on. Thursday yep. night is the completion of, and Alan's like, oh, thank God, the completion of the Hidden Temple of Arithnal. Oh, thank God. It's going to be finished <laughs> on Thursday night, uh, one way or another. I finished up uh, working up the uh, Master Maze map. That's done and ready to go. Uh, that'll be done on Thursday. We will get that adventure uh, finished um, with the Bloody Brethren slash First Yulik Pathfinders. So that'll be on Thursday night. The next Sunday, getting on the um, 
on the direction of what Anna has said, we are going to be doing our, our cabin next Sunday is about, I, forget, I think I, I put down the politics, nobility, and locations of Celine. So we're going to go into depth on Celine. We're going to talk about Mark, East Vesper. We there we go. Yep. We're going to talk about, we haven't talked about East Vesper. We, we're going to talk yeah, about the, really. the South Walkwood Bridge, the battles there. We're going to talk about all the estates. We're going to talk about the the, the logos up now, the Selenian Sis Forest Night's Watch, which Christoph slash Icarus has asked me to do a, a story for the Earth Journal uh, about. So I'm working on that for the next Earth Journal. And we're going to talk about the how the noble houses interact with each other and look down the lesser houses and uh, just talk about the history of Selene. selene has been a huge area in our campaign. Yep. I mean, huge. Uh, back in the early days, you either came from the Wild Coast or you came from Selene or Keoland. That was it, right? For the most part, that's the three areas that a lot of characters came from. And so um, I tried to explain to Christoph about why there's so many half elves uh, coming out of Selene. So uh, you know, we'll explain that next uh, next week as well. Some some big events that are planned down the road. All right, um, I talked about it a little bit the week after Thursday. We bring out our brand new Harbor Town, which I've been advertising for forever. Uh, uh, the Harbor Town for Metro Building Authority. And in the adventure, Michael Baton is missing. You will see the Harbor Town setting, you know, or the amount that we got out on the map. So I can't wait to use that stuff. Um, it is super cool. So we'll be using that a week from Thursday. That'll probably be either two week or three week long adventure. September 21st, this is Saturday night. If Brian uh, Sublime is on, he's going to DM again uh, his 5e game for myself and Anna and Will and Bill if he can make it. And the Nazrat, uh, you know, the, those people, he'll run uh, his game. Um, he hasn't told me if it's going to be the third part of Iris of the Moon or if it's going to be a different adventure yet. But he's going to be DMing for us on Saturday, s September 21st. Way down the road, Saturday, October 26th, Tim will be DMing his City State of the Invincible Overlord, so on a Saturday night special. So that's set down the road, and uh, Tim's, of course, very excited. He's actually making a tongue tool for, uh, out of plastic, which is really disturbing. I don't even know, I know what that's for, so uh, I don't want to be in person with Tim there. No. And then, <laughs> yes, and then November, th I think it's the th 16th. Saturday, November 16th is the target date for our at least 16-hour next mega stream fundraiser. It's either going to be 16 hours or 20 hours, depending on who's involved. And so uh, we're going to do another cool thing to raise some money. And, of course, we will be the finale. I haven't even talked to Mark yet about if his group's going to go or not on that date. Yeah. So, you know, you got you to put that feeler out at work. Uh, it's the... it's. Not the Saturday before Thanksgiving, two Saturdays before Thanksgiving. It's the 16th, okay? Yep. All right, and we'll talk about that. And we got a lot going on. I'm going to have some other cool special guests coming up on Gabin. So I uh, appreciate everyone coming on tonight and discussing um, Altamira. Uh, anyone have any questions? Uh, um, thank you all. Thanks, uh, Taryn, a new follower. Thank you uh, all the resubs tonight. It was a ton of them ton of resubs tonight. Uh, thank you all so very much for that. Um, we appreciate it, but um, all I'll say is with Altamira, it just, we just started something and it, it snowballed, it built up, and we had a lot of fun with it, and we'll keep on building it. And now we're going to go that one step beyond and actually get a someone to make the map. It may take six months, but at least we'll have it done based on all the locations we have. Uh, we're going to continue to work on that and continue to develop Greyhawk content because that's what it's all about, is keeping Greyhawk going. You know, yeah. it's um, that's that's where we are. Oh, uh, yeah, and don't forget, any of you that live on the East Coast, PAX Unplugged is coming to Philadelphia. Yep. Uh, it's like the 6th, 7th, and 8th of December. And I'm going to be DMing there at least two times. Anna will be there with Sirenscape and yep. hopefully hopefully a couple of the other of uh, my other crew will be there. I know Walt was with me one day last year. So just note that out the PAX Unplugs coming in December. That'll be the last uh, 
convention I do for the year um, will be will be at that. So, how long have your games been going on, Taryn? Thirty nine years. Um, I'm gonna tell something that kind of saddened me a hair. Yeah. I, I saw that on Facebook. If I think it is what I think it the, is, the guy who said he's on for year forty already. Yes, but. One caveat. There's an older gentleman, I forget his name, Joe Sample or something like that. He yeah. said last week was the 40th anniversary of my D&D campaign. And so we turned 40 officially next year. And we've always said we've had the longest ongoing campaign in existence. But then he said the last group of players I've had have been together for 11 years. And I said, well, I have players who have been playing since, Alan's been playing since 78. So I have players who've been playing since the beginning. So is it an ongoing campaign if you have different people? So, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that I think uh, the caveat is we have the longest ongoing campaign with original members still playing since day one. Uh, you know. Uh, so, but that's okay because you know it's it, his, he's not Greyhawk, <laughs> right? Yeah, he, he had homebrew. So yeah, he's like he just turned forty years. Like ah, oh. and of course he was uh, like oh that other guy got all this uh, notoriety when he had thirty five. I was like whatever, not a big deal. So yes, um, Taryn, thirty nine years, fortieth year next year. We'll have a big some big celebrations going on next year, yeah. and uh, so any of you guys have any final thoughts? Great, great one tonight. It was fun. Nope. Altamira is cool, and I'm glad we did it. Uh, I'm glad it, it, it's ongoing to this day. I'm glad there's some good things and bad things about it. You know, it's uh, it's one of our uh, shining stars of our campaign, I think, yeah. because it's everyone. We all contributed to it. Um, everyone has, has an, a building they did or an idea they did. Everyone has contributed to it, so it, it's really part. It's a it's a team effort for it. So, yes, not Greyhawk. It doesn't count, man. It only counts if it's Greyhawk. But by the way, also Blackmore, right? Those guys. Look at that right at the end. Thank you so very much, Seedreed sixty five. Thank you. The Blackmore campaign, Dave Arneson's, is still going on, I think, and that started in seventy six, didn't it, Anna? Yeah, something like that. It, yeah. it was very contemporary or, or the same time as, as Greyhawk started. Yeah, Black, so Black, Dave Arneson, who passed, but his uh, predecessors are still running the same campaign in Blackmore. Mm -hmm. Technically, is, I think they would say that's the longest ongoing. But well, we have, yeah, then you have Ed Greenwood with the Forgotten Realms that started as a as a game as a world bef before D and D. So, so it's kind of it's back in the hazy days of of, of cool things getting started. So, yeah, so, and yeah. and that's 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 great. And I just want everyone to know that you know, yep. my guys have been together. You know, Bill's the Bill's the the young one, and it was 1992. So. But thank you all for uh, coming on here. I'm going to hit up uh, another NBA ad, and uh, I'll see you guys. Um, I'll be on a little bit, uh, but Mark's game. Don't miss Mark's game tomorrow night. Oh, by the way, one last thing. If you haven't Patreon, Anna, it's $5 a month. Guys, it's the thank best you. $5 a month you'll ever spend for the content you're getting. Uh, <laughs> I have done it. Tim has I done it. Yeah. Will has done it. Uh, uh, low 505. What's uh, everyone? You know, it's it's five bucks, guys, and it's worth every penny. So please just Thank take you. a look at it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, just remember, guys, doesn't matter the edition you're playing, but yeah, Greyhawk is where it's at. So we'll see you soon. See you, uh, see you tomorrow night for Mark's uh, great adventure. Is there a name on it? Nope, no, I'm saving that as a surprise. I put down the Cron Hills oh. Adventures, and if it's wrong, it's wrong. It's not a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. That is it. Talk to you soon. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye, everybody. Yay. Good one, guys. Yep. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Oh yeah, definitely. That was that was awesome. Ah. All right, Mark. So you were. Uh, so uh, it's definitely slap, though, right? Yes, it was definitely slap. Okay. That's cool. Yep. So what was wrong with your machine? You know. So it must have gone through a Windows update because it just completely fried the what appears to be um, the driver. So while while I had um, the chat going on, I was looking to see if I could find any anything out on the internet that gave me ideas. So I just re-downloaded the driver uh, for it, and uh, it 
expert at working. So, You're the know. second person today I've heard had that problem or similar oh, problem. Really? Yeah, yeah okay. another audio drive has just disappeared and, and nothing worked. So, oh, yeah. Well. yeah, I mean, I must have rebooted like three or four times in the next. I'm doing stuff. So. Yeah. Put your map update up one more time. Thank you. All right, I do need to run. All right, I sounds good. Talk later. <laughs> awesome. If I hit the right button.